कीजिए बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया जय हिंद जय भारत थैंक यू चेयरमैन थैंक यू चेयरपर्सन मैम मैम आई स्टार्ट विद द स्टेटमेंट ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट्स एंड रीजंस व्हिच इज मेंशन इन द बिल एंड दैट वुड प्रॉब्ली सेटल अ लॉट ऑफ द एप्रिहेंशन दैट हैव बीन एक्सप्रेस्ड बाय मेंबर्स ऑन द मेंबर्स ऑफ द मेंबर्स ऑन माय राइट द ऑनरेबल ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट द ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट इन रिट रिट पिटिशन नंबर 104 ऑफ 2015 Anup Barnawal versus Union of India declared that the appointment of CEC and EC shall be made by the president. So and so, everyone has talked about it, but it has clarified in the judgment very clearly. I want to reiterate, and which the honourable minister also mentioned it while introducing the bill, that this particular composition of the prime minister and the leader of the opposition and the chief justice of India shall continue until and unless a law is made by parliament. and unfortunately a law was not made in parliament if you know that the c i i belong to an organization which is the comptroll and auditor general of india i used to i used to belong to that organization which had a law in place duty duties and powers and conditions of service of the cg of india 1971 so i must congratulate the government that at least a law has been made and that law has succinctly and in law it has now been mentioned what will be the appointment what will be the conditions of service and what will be the salary of the election chief election commissioner and the election commissioners that having having said that i will come to the second point and that is relating a lot of uh, mention has been made about uh, uh, you know about uh, the independence there are basically four issues independence interference democracy being uh, um, trampled upon basically these three arguments were made ma'am the uh, uh, point is there is something called uh, a doctrine which is a doctrine of fallacy fallacy of causation that if this happens this will happen if this happens that will happen and this false causality is the main issue out here the bill talks about the appointments conditions of service as i mentioned whereas the transaction of business in the election commission has been mentioned at section 16 chapter 4 transaction of business of election commission the transaction of business of an election commission is to conduct elections the appointment process is a completely separate issue altogether people who have after being appointed only they will conduct the election and 171 says that the allocation of work will be done by majority 172 says how the business a decision will be done by 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 majority the other one was unanimity some people say that everything should be unanimous if that is so will the election commission not function if there is no unanimous decision during an election process i think that has to be thought about there is this situation which says that you completely jeopardize the system just because the, there is no unanimity among the three members or four members or five members so i think it is absolutely an unacceptable proposition which has been put forward by some uh, some of my colleagues i'll come to the uh, point relating to ma'am the issue that the process outlined in the bill would in inevitably lead to a loss of independence for the election commission is a fallacy if such an assertion is held true it would raise doubts about the efficacy of all election commissioners commissioners over the past 76 years given the appointment of ecs has been within the purview of the executive despite this they have consistently operated independently ma'am the election commission has overseen completion of 17 national and 317 state elections since independence in 1947 even under pressure from the executive branch and governing parties to bow to the demands fed by their desire for electoral success the eci has managed to strengthen its autonomy from year to year election to election let us not forget 1977 1977 the post emergency elections in 1977 the opposition was apprehensive 
about the election process itself. Let me quote, Charan Singh wrote to Jai Prakash Narayan, both opposition stalwarts in January 1977. Mrs. Gandhi is thinking of staging an election. I call it staging because conditions for a real election, free and fair, will be lacking. Raghavan 2017, I can lay it on the, on, the, on the table of the House. As it turned out, Congress was voted out of national office for the first time during these elections. And this was in 1977, when there was a single chief election commissioner, the elaborate process was not there. Now, when a process is being brought in now through a regular act of parliament, I think it is laudable, extremely praiseworthy to the government that such a particular process is being brought in. Now, I'll come to the second point, ma'am, relating to a judge being a part of the process. Now, if the judge was a part of the selection process, what would happen? If the CJI is in the committee to rec recommend appointments and raises questions of violation, of, it raises basically questions of violation of the doctrine of separation of power, but I would like to refer to my colleague, uh, Honorable Jawahar Sarkar said that what would happen, that, that in the appointment of the CAG, some particular CAG turned out to have a CBI case against him. Now, if this was the situation here, wouldn't the CJI be a party to a decision on which he may be probably required to take a decision in the judicial capacity? Would it not be a travesty of justice then? The CJI, being a part of the judiciary, cannot be a part of any selection process in this country. Now, let me also remind you that under the RTI Act, in which most of the states who are represented here have elected the chief information commissioners and information commissioners, what is the selection process? The selection process is the chief minister, another senior minister, and the leader of the opposition. All of them have done. All of us have done. Is it all, all, all which has been done is absolutely trash? Is it something which has been mired in, in subjectivity? In bias? Absolutely not. So I think the process is fine. The, a, an element or, or a person from the judiciary cannot be a part of the process. Now I'll come to, ma'am, a, a, a point relating to, which has been raised quite a bit, which is relating to the issue of conduct of elections. After 1989, no party in a position to win a majority, the ECI faced few structural con constraints on its autonomy. I had mentioned, ma'am, that right from the beginning, all election commissioners, whether it was a single member or a three-member committee, have always upheld the process, to, uh, the, up, upheld democracy by conducting free and fair elections. The motive has been to decrease money power, to increase transparency, to increase more number of people to access to the electronic voting machines, electric access to the booths. And in that process, the model code of conduct was brought out. Model code of conduct doesn't have any legislative backing. It is an unanimity, unanimous decision between parties. And that is being enforced by the election commission. So the election commission, even after 1989 onwards, has been holding this model code of conduct as the beacon of democracy and has been holding the elections freely and fairly. Of course, there are always allegations and counter-allegations, but I can tell you that in the recent survey, in a countrywide survey conducted by the Center for the Study of Developing Societies, Delhi, in 1996, after the 11th general election, the EC stood as the institution that was trusted the most by people followed by the judiciary, the state government, local self-government, so on and in that order. And this, despite not having the advantage or not having the backing of a law to, de to determine their conditions of service and appointments and salaries. Yes. So 96, this was the opinion which was, this was the opinion way back in 96. And when I said, I would, since Manoj Jhaji said, 1977 is the one which was the watermark in Indian democracy. Democracy was under threat. Even during that time, the elections were held and Mrs. Indira Gandhi's government was thrown out. And that shows that the election commission's transaction of business, which is covered under 
section under section 16 and 17 in chapter 4 is not affected by the appointment process that is followed and the appointment process that is followed is something on which i said the refer references to the rti act and also let me also tell the inform the house that the inf insofar as the appointment of the Comptroller and Auditor General of India is concerned, there is not even a search committee, not even a selection committee. And the Supreme Court in the Constitu sorry, this Constituent Assembly, Mr. Ambedkar held that the CAG is a functionary which is even more important than the judiciary. Still, it is being done without a selection committee system, and still it is performing to the best, best of its abilities for the service of the nation. Well, there is one point which I wanted to make in addition, which is by way of suggestion. The point which is mentioned about election commissions, conditions of service of election commissioners, transaction of business 91 is hereby repealed. Now, what happens to the existing commissioners and the existing chief election commissioner who have been appointed by the previous act? If this is repealed, Immediately, what happens to their conditions of service? I must thank the Honorable Minister that by way of amendment at 37, number 37, I had a lot of things to say on that. Fortunately, this amendment has been brought and that is a sense of the House that his status should have been kept at the level of the Supreme Court of India. This has been restored. Only one correction here, uh, Honorable Minister. At page 2, it is written it should be page 3 and 43 to 45, whatever has been mentioned, is, 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 uh, is well made. The uh, other suggestion, the other, other query that I have is the election, uh, this has already been mentioned, the removal of the election commissioners has not been made at par with the removal of the chief election commissioner. In this amendment two, at number two, the chief election commissioner shall not be removed from his office except in like manner and on the like grounds as a judge of the Supreme Court. The other election commissioners shall not be removed from office except on the recommendation of the chief election commissioner. Does it mean that they would also follow the same procedure and also an additional recommendation from the chief election commissioner? Or only the chief election commissioner can remove? I think this clarity has to be brought into this particular amendment. The Supreme Court and the 1991 Act have already made it very clear that the election commissioners and the chief election commissioners should be put in the same footing, except that the chief election commissioner is first among the equals. Now, if that is so, I think the removal procedure should also be ensured. One more point, and this is a very significant point. This is relating to the independence. The independence of an organization like the Chief Election Commission is more linked to the way their conditions of service are governed. If the conditions of the service can be changed after their appointment, if their appointment tenure can be reduced, if their salaries can be reduced, if the removal procedure can be, removed, can be changed, then it is an affront to their independence not at the appointment process. And therefore, in the appointment and conditions of service of the CAG also, it says that none of these can be altered to the detriment of the election commission after the appointment has been made. And since that has also been maintained in the bill, I have no hesitation in saying that there is no affront to the independence and interference in the election process that has been argued by many of my colleagues uh, before me. The, uh, the, the last point is relating to uh, the, you know, the election commission in the process. The election commission is not just a three-member body. It has al already been uh, stated uh, eloquently by uh, my, my colleague, uh, uh, Mr. Jawahar Sarkar. The point here, the election machinery in India, the largest democracy, which when the whole world observes and is absolutely, uh, you know, they, they, are, they are completely taken aback, surprised, that such an election is held without any kind of a problem and, my, and transfer of power takes place. Now, this is happening by the support of the machinery right till the municipality level, right till the panchayat level. So, if that happens, if that is the case, if that is the case, then 
how come only three members are they, their independence is important do you mean to say the judges of our lord judiciary are not independent do you mean to say our district magistrates who actually are the returning officers during the elections are not independent only these three people should be independent i think this entire argument is fallacious is based on absolutely an argument which is which is which, which, which is nonest in law i would say i would therefore end by saying that i support the bill i would i would request the honorable minister to bring in these clarifications i would thank him again for bringing him and par with the supreme court judge and also would request that their removal procedure should be made equal in which case their independence would actually and truly be uh, be be preserved thank you so much ma'am it's not your turn subhash chandra bos oh okay yeah there are some offensive expressions which have been used in the in the speech by some members i didn't want to interject in between uh particularly my reference is to can you mention the rule please yeah this is rule number 238 point number uh, sub point 7 madam okay so this is uh, some use oh sir 261 let me take up 261 first 261 first offensive expressions use of offensive expressions i would like them to be expunged terms like he was used for for a uh, for a constitutional body kabja on a chunav ya no ayog these are highly objectionable words and also of democracy we are we are here we are you are a bit are, late you Sorry? should have objected before mr patnaik started no sir, he no, never it, used no, such words whoever no, him i raga mr raga should have objected at that no, time no member raga chedda has used mr. these Bose, expressions please. i would like them to be mr boss please mr boss please no why record 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 sir ek baar dekh 